Today I'm going to show you how we can draw a pumpkin to look like a jack-o'-lantern. And it's very similar to how we drew the apple. First we need to start off with a circle. And with my arm in motion, I'm just going to go around a few times like this. I'm using an orange crayon. The next thing I'm going to do is draw an elliptical shape that's about, eh, maybe about three or four inches from the top like this. And by having it drawn lower rather than higher on the paper, we'll be able to see the pumpkin behind the stem and it makes it look a little more 3D. I'm going to start at the center of this ellipse and I'm going to make the line curve and come over to the edge like this. I'll do the same thing here. It's going to curve and then come down and keep curving until it hits the edge. I'll also continue this and go like this. And I'll continue and we'll come down this way. And imagine an imaginary line running right down the center of the pumpkin. Whatever is on the left side will curve to the left and whatever is on the right side of the center line will curve to the right. So this will curve up this way and eventually this will go up straight and this will come down this way and this will curve over to the right. Oops, broke my crayon there. Continue this over. This will continue this way. This will continue this way and this way. The next thing I need to do is to draw the bumps on the pumpkin so it looks real. And I'll start off by drawing a curve like here, a curve that goes from the bottom of this line to this line, and I'll connect it this way, and also like this. And I can always put more lines in there too. You can always have as many as you like. So this can go like this and like this, and this can go this way and then curve up. I can put another one in there, and this will go like this. And eventually it would just work its way up to the sides. And if I put a few more in here like this, this will go like this, and then curve again, and then again like that. I'll bring it up a little higher so you can see it. And this goes like this, and like this, and back like this, and then down again. So that's the basic look. We start from the center, and we just work our way out and around and down. The next thing I'm going to do is draw the stem. And the stem will start right from the inside here. And I'm going to um, fill this area in and you'll be able to see how from this area I'll be able to work out from these edges, from the sides of this elliptical shape. This will come up this way, and then this will go like this. I'll make it a little thinner on the top. And I could draw an elliptical shape on the top to show the top of the stem. And another thing I could do too, if, if you'd like, you can use yellow or you can use green or combination. And I'll press really hard with some yellow I'll also put some green in there, a little bit of green crayon like this. And I'll put some more yellow, press really hard. So this whole area gets filled in. Even the top of the stem gets some of that yellow as well. Now this technique is called the crayon etching. And what's fun about this technique is I'm going to take some tempera paint. I have some green and some black tempera and I'm going to add just a touch of black temper with a small brush to this green paint. And I'm going to um, stir this up a little bit. I'm gonna mix this up until I come up with a dark green. And you can use any color you want. I mean, it could be brown, it could be brown and black or just black. But I'll mix this up to a dark green. So I've taken some of this green, I've moved it down a little bit to here, I've added a little black to it, and I'm going to just paint the stem in like this. So I'm gonna get a little closer so I could get a better grip of the, the brush here. And I'm just going to paint this in. I also want to go like that a little bit, spread that out. It's like they have, stems have these little fingers, you know, that sort of grab onto the pumpkin sections. The next thing I can do is I can take a penny and while the paint is still wet, I can just scrape some rhythmic lines like this, wipe the penny off and just make these lines that follow the rhythm. And it will also give the feeling of uh, the, those deep grooves that you see in, inside of the stems. So adding some extra texture here, that always makes it look pretty cool. So it looks just like that. Um, now I should go over the lines one more time with the crayon. 
and I really should press a little harder now. So I'm going to go over these, just like that. Now that I've gone over the lines very heavily with this orange crayon, I'm going to paint the pumpkin in a very dark, kind of a, uh, a brownish orange. I want the pumpkin to look very dark, so I could eventually cut a face out of this to look like a jack-o'-lantern, and I'll have another piece of paper behind it, which will be a bright yellow, and the yellow and the darker orangey-brown pumpkin will create this value contrast, and the strong light and dark will make it look like the the light is glowing on the inside, like there was a candle lit on the inside. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to go back to uh, this, this green and black that I made, and I just want to outline the top of this right here so you can get to see the top of that. You can see that little bit of yellow, and you can also see the top of the stem. Okay, now I'm going to take some orange tempera, and I'm going to bring some of it over here. probably need about probably this much, quite a bit. I'm going to take some of this brown, mix the brown with it. This color is like a, it's like a burnt umber. But they call it brown and that works. And I'm just mixing these two together. And I'll thoroughly mix them until I come up with a, a color that is like a, it's like a, it's a dark orange actually. It's just a little brown and some, some orange. And I think this kind of color and value works pretty good. And now I'm just going to paint these in. And if you get a little bit too close to your lines or you cover your lines up like this. You can always go back to that penny. Take your penny and just scrape and you can reveal the line that's underneath. Just remove the wet paint and you can just go back to the line. You can see that again. It's very important to make sure that we still see these lines otherwise it will look very flat. And we want to make sure that we keep it looking like a pumpkin. So these sections are very important. So we'll bring this down like this. Always load up your paint, your brush with lots of paint. Hold this like a pencil and just brush it in. And then turn your brush over and continue to let the, the paint flow out of the brush. Always use lots of paint. Be, be generous with it. The sort of a nice thing about painting with paint. It just has a nice feeling to just let the paint flow like that. And I'll get a little closer there. Like that. Go back to the penny and remove some of this. And I'll just continue this all the way around to the, the other side. Okay, I'm all done painting this orangey brown color throughout the whole pumpkin. And I'm done using my penny and scraping away those areas that the paint had covered the crayon. So now I can see the sections again. Um, I also need to let this paint dry before I can do anything else. Um, but I realized I still have the stem here that I think I'll make these little kind of fingers just a little bit longer. So I'm taking some of that dark green temper paint again and I'm just going like this, I'm just painting a few lines like that coming out. And it just so, it makes it look more like the stem is grabbing onto the pumpkin like it usually 
does. It has that kind of look. Okay, so I just have to let this dry. Okay, the pumpkin's all dry. You can always speed it up, put a blow dryer to it if you wanted to, like I did, which seems to work really fast, which works good. Otherwise, you can just be patient and just let it air dry either way. I'm going to take this sheet of paper right off here and take my scissor and cut this out. Chris, what I like to do is just get rid of the excess paper. I find it's a lot easier and quicker to just get rid of this extra weight. I'm going to follow right along the edge here, making sure that I don't have any white paper showing. And it's important that I put these bumps in. So you want to curve, and then put another curve in there, and to keep curving it as you go from line to line like this. So the nice thing about using a scissor is that you can always, you know, correct your painting. Always create, um, you know, bigger bumps if you need to. And I'll go to the top here is another bump, and there's another curve, and another curve, and we'll do that one. And it is around like this, and that should be it. So the next thing is, I'm going to be drawing a face on this, and then I'll be cutting out those sections, and I'll show you how that works. Now you could either draw a face on there or you can go online and get an image of one that you like. It could be, you know, kind of a happy face or some kind of a scary, creepy face, whatever you like to do. And I'm just going to trim this. And if you're good at drawing, you can just copy and just draw it on. But if you like to trace it, that's fine too. And I think a good trick is to just turn the paper over, take a piece of white chalk, regular chalkboard chalk, and just scribble some chalk back there. Put it exactly on the areas that you're going to be tracing. And if you hold it up to the light, you can get to see what those areas are. So I'll put a little bit of chalk on this and here and some more on here. I already had put some chalk on here, but I'll just add a little more to make sure that I have plenty. going to take some masking tape and I'm going to place it right there. Just take that on. I don't want this to move. And with a pencil I'm just going to trace the outside like this. going over the edge a few times, pressing hard, making sure that the white of the chalk shows up on my pumpkin. I want to make sure I have a good white line there so I can see it. And you can always take a peek to see if it worked okay. Yeah, it looks like I've got it all. Good. The next thing I'm going to do is cut this out. And you can either get in there with a small scissor. If that was the case, you could just poke through there, put a hole through it, and just cut it out carefully like that. Or another technique that's nice too is use an X-Acto knife. If you use an X-Acto knife, you want to definitely ask your parents to uh, you know, make sure that they say it's okay that you use it. Um, they might want to supervise. You know, it all depends, of course, on you know, how old you are. Um, but I think the X-Acto knife works really well for getting out these small sections. And um, I'll show you how that works. I have my pumpkin here with uh, my white lines that I have traced on. I have a piece of cardboard. You want to make sure that you have a piece of cardboard behind your pumpkin if you're using an X-Acto knife. An X-Acto knife looks like this. It's almost like a doctor's scalpel. It's just a blade inside of a metal, um, it's like a pencil, 
and you just hold on to it just like this very firmly and it's just a matter of cutting um, always keep your hands up here so your hands away from the blade and just cut down like this and I'll, I'll hold it up here so you can see it and you just go like this and you just follow the line give it even pressure and that will just pop right out just like that so I'll cut these others out the the other spaces out and then I'll show you what to do next And I just have a little more cutting out to do. And there we go. The next thing I need to do now is to take a sheet of white paper and just brush some tempera paint on the back of it with some bright yellow. And it's just a matter of placing this over the yellow and you have that bright kind of a glowing look from the inside. And it looks like this. Now another technique could be doing this. You take a white sheet of paper and you take a pencil and you trace the openings like this. And when you're done tracing all the openings, you know exactly where you want to put the paint. And then this way, you're able to paint um, a color that goes from orange, blend it up into yellow to make a yellow orange. You could put a little red on the bottom. It could look sort of like this when you're done. This is a combination of my yellow and then putting my orange and my red, and it almost looks like this flames there. And um, if I lift this up a little bit, you can see how the shapes just fit right through there. And I was able to just paint. And I knew exactly where to paint because I had already traced it. But I sort of like the look of this one. I like the way it's opened on top. Let's tape this up. So we have this one here. And we'll put the tape behind this one. You could always use a glue stick to just glue this down. And of course, you'll trim this off here so we don't see that paper sticking out. Do that right now. And we'll take a couple of loops of tape. them just like that. So there we have our jack-o'-lanterns, a very simple technique of using dark brown and orange mixed and using a value contrast of a lighter color behind it to make it look like it, it's candle lit is inside, has that glowing look. And um, I think it's easy to make, it's a lot of fun. And uh, happy Halloween. And um, thank you for joining me today. So, that's all there is to it. It's as easy as that. All you have to do is just mix up some orange and brown paint. So you have like a dark orange color. Brush it onto a piece of paper that's in the shape of a pumpkin. Cut out some holes in it so it represents some type of a happy or a scary face. And preferably put a bright color piece of paper like yellow behind it. So it has that look like there's a candlelight from behind and has that bright glowing look inside. So you guys have a happy Halloween and enjoy yourselves.